Okay, so I've got a new case from 52Pi, but unfortunately the OLED display didn't work with the code I was given, uh, so I'm waiting for some new code to come through. While I was doing an update on Raspberry Pi OS, I figured I'd try my Motorola laptop, uh, which is basically a laptop style computer, nice and slim actually, um, but uh, it doesn't have any computer in it. It's uh, designed to work with a phone. And I've got a separate video on the Motorola Atrix, which is a phone that clips in and basically becomes the computer. Uh, I did a video as well about using it with the original Raspberry Pi Zero, um, but it's quite a slow device, especially for an operating system. All right with RetroPie, but as an operating system, not that fun to use. But uh, I had a play around with my Zero 2W, and you can see here I've uh, shaved off some of an HDMI adapter. So this is a micro to HDMI adapter, and then I'm using a mini uh, to female HDMI full size. So this plugs on like this, uh, and you can see that it's freestanding, doesn't get in the way of the display when you open up the display, and then you need to power it. Now the ideal scenario would be if this cable, a male to female micro USB cable would work, uh, because it literally fits in here and here, and that would, lit that would be it. So as a connection, those two in, uh, all freestanding, very easy to unplug, that would be done. Unfortunately, this is just a power cable, it's just a charging cable, which is quite common with some of these short cables. I did have a solution I was working on, which was uh, female micro USB uh, to USB A, but this plastic was a bit too big, so I managed to get the plastic off, but the whole thing, uh, once I'd plugged it in uh, and then tried to unplug it, it just fell apart. So uh, there are other solutions, but I think probably, uh, the fact that it holds it so well on this HDMI connection, I mean, it really is feeling solid because this is so light. Uh, one of those would be perfect if it supported data. But I've got a workaround. My workaround is, this is a female HDMI micro, so that fits onto here like that. Then I can plug in to my HDMI here. So that holds it in place. Uh, and then I just need power. Uh, and I was doing that with USB-C to micro, get the right way around, and then USB-C to USB-A. Actually, I've got another way. Uh, I think I showed a different one in my community tab, but this would be a USB-A female to C, so that's still nice and solid. Uh, and then I can go USB-C to micro, get that the right way around. It makes a funny noise. Let's start it up. Usually only takes about 30 seconds to start up. While it's starting up, you can see my cable. Uh, I, was, I was hoping to use some of these, uh, but uh, you need to go male to female, and these are all male. Um, so I've got things like micro USB to USB A, that's HDMI to HDMI, micro HDMI to HDMI, and USB C to USB A, but none of them worked. So it's all started up. When I looked at my last video of this, I didn't really show me using the trackpad very much, but basically, uh, we have trackpad support, you can see the mouse is moving around. Uh, I've sped it up because it's quite a slow mouse pad um, compared to the operating system. Um, and so if you speed up the, the mouse pointer, it works much, much better. Uh, but obviously the cursors and everything work fine. Uh, if I was to launch something, so say we launch the internet, oh, and uh, we can use, actually the Puffin web browser is the best one to use on this because Chromium is terrible on a Pi Zero. Uh, I'm not overclocked, but I was overclocked. When I first started plugging this in, uh, I was overclocked and it was working absolutely fine. So let's just maximize that. Uh, let's just do a search for one of my videos. But the nice thing about this is this is all working from battery. If I tip it back a little bit and press the button on the front here, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five lights that light up. When I tried it, I hadn't tried this for ages. It's just been sat in the lounge, uh, not being used and the battery life was on three, and I used it for really quite a long time experimenting with it, and it was absolutely fine. Uh, so, let's see, oh, it's on my channel. The scroll doesn't work on, like two finger scrolling doesn't work on the trackpad, but this is from 2011, this laptop, and yet it's possibly still the slimmest laptop that you can get for a Raspberry Pi. Especially now that the Zero is definitely usable. Uh, so, let's click here. And if I press function and page down, or it's playing some other video, but you can hear the audio is working. Uh, let's just pick another one of my videos. That'll do. 
And so you can hear that the audio comes through. Uh, I can change the brightness on the controls. Uh, I can do things like, uh, if I want a terminal, so Control, Alt and T, then terminal will come up, he says, there you go. Uh, and, well, let's just stop this advert. In fact, let's close down. Oh no, let's do a little bit more of the web browser. So, Hot UK Deals. And you can see that the web browser seems pretty good. Oh, that daily sale. So if I click on that one, accept the cookies. There's more details about the Motorola and the Atrix in a separate video if you wanna know about that. So I won't go through that now. Uh, it is a little bit annoying that you've gotta do page down function and page down to go down a web page. I suppose you can do the old click on the bar, but I'm so not used to having to do that now um, that it seems like a bit of a chore to do. But uh, it is cool the way it's working. So if I tap up, you can see that I've got pseudo nano boot config.txt. Uh, and if I go into it and scroll down, I'm getting no low energy warnings or anything, by the way. Uh, you can see that what I did have before, there it is. So I, when I first started using this, I was on over voltage of eight and uh, arm frequency was 1425. So let's put it back on that uh, because it wasn't crashing or anything. It was working fine. Uh, so control X and yes, enter and then reboot and see what happens when it reboots. So it flicks off, it's coming back on again. And if I pick it up just to show that it is completely portable. So uh, it's not really that bad at the back. You know, that, that sort of configuration uh, is, I think, is livable with. You could, certainly if we had it uh, with that shorter cable that I showed the configuration at the start, I think that's really usable and uh, I'm really quite like that. Okay, we appear to have crashed. <laughs> so let's turn that, close that down and uh, let's start, open it up again and see if it's just that because I was moving it around, that might have not liked it. Okay, so it doesn't seem to like it now. I'm gonna try that trick where you hold shift when you start it up and see if that disables the overclock. It didn't do it in my other video, uh, so I'm not sure if it's gonna do it on this one. But if it boots up, I guess it will have worked. Oh yeah, so possibly in this case, uh, that has worked. Let's, let's test that and see if that's the case. So 600 at the moment. So it should only go up to 1000 if it's worked, as opposed to going right up to, what was it, 1400? So if I hover over it now, 600. Oh, it's only going to 600. So it's not even trying to go higher. That's fine because this is like an emergency boot to basically get the system up and running. So let's drop it down to uh, maybe 1300 or 1200. Weird how it was working before though. So back into config.txt and let's go for, let's go for four and 1200. And you can, I did this with a Pi 4 and I undervolted it so the Pi 4 was using less power um, and less, uh, the, the CPU was running at a lower frequency as well. So control X, uh, yes, enter, reboot, enter. So all that seems to be working all right. And while it's rebooting, let's take the chance that we can move it. You can see on the back, I've got a couple of USB A sockets and that's the power socket where you charge it. Yeah, so that's starting up all right. And if I go down to the bottom, it might still say 1200 when it's booting up. 600, 700, so let's launch Puffin and go back over, yeah, 1200. So definitely uh, the Motorola Atrix lap dock is, I think still one of the best uh, laptop solutions for a Pi Zero. And uh, I'll play around with this more, but the Pi Zero as an operating system is usable. Video playback's not great, although with the Puffin browser, as long as you stay around about 4, 480, it's fine. But uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you like this. I hope it helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.